So here I have an application uh, and I am putting up input boxes to collect scores for a student and then I am writing those variables into the value of the next row here. So it looks like this. And they fill in. So the next thing I want to be able to do is find the average for each exam or each score. So I have a couple of different ways to approach this. If I want to do it manually, I can enter the formula for average and then I can choose the data and get the average for the first exam. I want to be able to automate this in VBA, so I want to be able to pass formulas into, um, into my code. So what I would like to do now is write that average into this cell. So I want to find the bottom of the data. So I'm going to start out in B1000. I'm going to end Excel up and that selects the bottom of the data. And then I'm actually going to offset by two rows and no columns. So I've created a new sub here. Uh, this is going to be the average for the scores. And I can stick a formula in here. The formula is entered as a string, so it starts with a quote. And average is what I'm going to use. I could use sum or anything like that. And then I could do B2 through B12 and then end the string. Now when this is run, it should go to B1000, come up to the bottom of the data, offset by two rows, and use this formula. Let's see if this is working. And it is. The problem that I run into is this isn't flexible the data has to be B2 through B12. So if I only have three student records, uh, it's not going to work correctly. If I've got 400 student records, it won't work correctly. I need a way to make all of this very flexible. And I can get closer to that flexibility if I use this formula R1C1. So instead of dot value into this particular range, I'm going to use this property. And then I'm going to set that equal to this string. And it's still going to be the average function. This could be sum or standard deviation or max or min, anything like that. This is where I start to get my flexibility. And if I read this, this reads as R and then open bracket, close bracket, C, open bracket, close bracket, colon, and then RC again. Row and column for the top left, row and column for the bottom right. Now, when I'm using these, if I don't specify uh, anything, it's assumed to be zero. If I want to add up all of these, I can figure out that I have one, two, three, twelve rows I need to go up. So this is where I want my data and to get to the top left I need to go up twelve rows. So the top left would be minus twelve. Remember up and to the left is negative, down and to the right is positive. And I don't need to change columns, so that can stay blank, or stay zero, don't shift columns. Uh, and then for my lower right, if I want to find that, I need to go up two. So since up is negative, that's minus two.
Now when I run this, if I hover over it, I can see what the formula is actually doing, and it's doing B2 through B12. So it is finding the correct uh, data. Now, this still isn't very flexible because I have to specify the number of rows to move. Um, but we can, use, we can count those number of rows and use that in here as a variable. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, to count the rows, I need to create a counter. So I'm going to just declare a variable. Uh, I like to call my row counter in rows. I don't expect to have over 32,000, so I think integer will be fine. And then I'll populate the end rows by finding the top, by de defining the top, using end XL down to find the bottom, and then counting those. So it looks like this. I'm declaring a range of ranges. The top left is A2. That's where my data is always going to start. The first row is a, um, a header row. The bottom of my data can be found by going to A2 and XL down. We'll pick this. Now I've chosen to use the students because if a score was left blank uh, for some reason then the, it would mess up the, the count of rows. But here this should be all of the data. We shouldn't have any blanks over here in the A. So now I know how many rows there are, then I can use that. So I wanted to, to see if this is actually working correctly. I can add a watch. Uh, I could debug.print in rows. Uh, I'm a big fan of the message box. And I've commented on all the functionality except counting the rows and then returning that to me. And it says there are 11 rows. I can see right there, there are 11 rows. So I'm accurately counting the rows of data. I'm not including the header row. I can use that variable then in my formula. Now this is a string. This whole thing is a string. But my variable can't be used inside of a string. I have to escape out of the string, use the variable, and then go back into the string. So from where I'm at, this is going to be my variable. This is going to be the thing that changes. I have to add one to it because I have a blank row in between there. So it will look something like this. I'll escape out of my string. I'll add to it the variable in rows plus one. I'll add to that the rest of the string. So again, this is a piece of string. I escape out of it right here, this close quote. I'm going to add to that string the variable in rows, which I'm calculating up here. That number doesn't account for this empty row right here. So to make sure I'm all the way up here, I have to add one to it. Then I need to go back into my string. And to go back into my string, I'm just going to start the quote again and finish it out. Now this minus two, I can leave that because the total row or the average here is always going to be two away from the bottom of the data. So I can leave that static. The one that I don't know about is this one. It needs to be flexible so that if I have 50 rows, it can find the top. Or if I have two rows, it can find the top. So let's see if this works. And it does. If I hover over, I can see that the formula is B2 to B12. So minus 2 takes you up 2. And that one we can leave static, because this is always going to be 2 from the bottom. But the top one, to get up here, 
We were using minus 12, but we need that to be flexible. To make it flexible, let's count the number of rows, let's add one for this blank row, and then it will always be able to find the top of the data. So here I've added a couple more students. B2, so it's always finding the top correctly. B15, minus two, it just needs to go up a couple to find to be at the bottom. Likewise, if I've only got a few pieces of data in here, it's finding them correctly. And again, I've chosen to use average here, but we could replace this with sum. Uh, we could replace it with uh, any, any formula that we have, uh, we can stick in here.